Today, I'm going to discuss a current event and very hot topic that's affecting all of us handcrafters. Well, pretty much everyone these days. And while this channel is focused primarily on candle making and melt making, most of the information in this video is going to apply to nearly all handcrafters, hobbyists, and businesses. And that is the supply chain issues that we've all been dealing with in 2020 and now 2021. If you are a candle maker, soap maker, jam maker, designer, craft beer, brewer, painter, quilter, doll maker, basket weaver, sculptor, metal worker, woodworker, glass blower, leather worker, screen printer, jewelry maker, or an exotic tea supplier, stay tuned. Hi, my name is Wade Thomas. I'm the owner of Black Tie Barn Candle Company and this YouTube channel. This channel is focused on helping other hand crafters, both for business or hobby. Feel free to check in the description below for my other resources, Facebook, Instagram, website, and so on. Okay, so as I mentioned, today we're gonna to talk about the supply shortages and the delays that we all are experiencing, and it's very frustrating and difficult to deal with. I'm gonna review some of the root causes, some obvious and direct and some more indirect. Also, what we are hearing from other manufacturers and suppliers directly, and then several tips and options for dealing with these problems. Okay, so let's start off with the, the root causes of the supply chain issues that we're all experiencing. And by supply chain issues, what I'm referring to is uh, supply raw material shortages or delays and increased lead times, things like that. I think most of us understand what the problem is. And I think also most of us understand what the direct cause of this problem is, and that is the pandemic. But I think a lot of us, when we hear that, we don't really understand what that means. Like, yes, we know there's a pandemic, but why is the pandemic causing these issues? Well, the biggest issue that the pandemic is causing directly is a lack of domestic and global resiliency. And what does that mean? Well, if we talk about domestic first, now I'm here in the US, but this domestic would be your own country where you're at. All, all of our countries are having internal domestic issues uh, with maintaining normal operations, normal operating procedures. And that is, issues caused by delays in shipping, uh, staffing issues, um, it, issues getting their own raw materials to do their normal job, um, shutdowns, things like that. So we're all dealing with different varying levels of domestic disruption. Well, the second part of this is your global resiliency issue, and that is global disruption. Well, if every country is dealing with their own domestic disruptions, that of course, you can imagine, is larger on a grand scale when you talk to global. Think of it like one big puzzle. If every country is its own piece and they're all having issues and they're not fitting right, things just aren't working right, well, you m miss a lot of those pieces. It's hard to really get an idea of what the entire puzzle is supposed to look like. Um, it's hard to complete the puzzle. The entire globe works together when it comes to business. With that efficiency broken down, it really causes a lot of problems. So I'm not gonna go into a lot more detail, I think most of us understand on at least a high level that the pandemic itself is causing a direct issue with our supply chain. However, there is the more indirect cause to the supply chain issues that we're experiencing, um, and it's caused from the pandemic, but in a more indirect way. And that is the booming home hobbies and businesses that have started in 2020 and are going to continue to go on through 2021 because of shutdowns and lockdowns and um, or layoffs due to businesses having to reduce staffing, a lot more people are turning to at-home hobbies and at-home businesses. And what that means is now we're having a surge of other people entering the market and utilizing the same supplies that we normally would. So there's been a demand in supplies because more people getting into these industries or getting into these hobbies um, and with that increased demand and with already a shortage due to the problems, the operational problems from the pandemic, that creates a, creates a big gap. Demand and supply work so well together normally to make the market work. Well, we're dealing in this kind of perfect storm of a year or two years maybe now of where we're having supply issues, yet we're having more demand and that's widening the gap even more than it normally would be considered acceptable. Normally when demand and, and supply gap widen, there's correctable measures that can be taken to help kind of fix that issue. Um, that's kind of part of business and how the economy works. Well, this is uh, beyond extremes. We have extremes on both ends. We're having extremes on the demand side and extremes on the supply side, and it's causing the issues that we're seeing today. But let's talk a little bit more about what the manufacturers and suppliers are telling us directly. So the first thing that we're hearing is that, and this is the obvious one, is that manufacturers and suppliers are being adversely affected by the pandemic in a few different ways. One is a shortage in raw materials. Well, manufacturers can't manufacture what they do without the materials they need to make to, to manufacture. And so if other manufacturers are having material 
issues or raw supply and material issues, then that leads the next manufacturer who uses those components to have issues, which leads the suppliers to have issues and then retailers and manufacturers like us to have issues. It's really this supply chain cycle of inefficiencies and product problems that are causing the issue. Another problem is the shortages in staffing. This kind of goes without saying, but there's been a lot of unemployment around the globe in the past 12 months. And those shortages in staffing is also affecting the ability for these companies to uh, keep up with their normal operations. And then lastly is your shipping delays. Sometimes this is an issue with the carriers themselves, and other times it's just causing shipping delays because of the other two reasons. There's a shortage in supplies and materials, there's less staffing, which means less production, and that loss of production also means slower lead times and shipping delays. Now another reason that we're seeing some increase in ETAs and lead times is because of employee safety concerns. All companies are stepping up their employee safety standards and taking precautions to protect their employees and to protect the public, which in some of these measures do cause some extra delays. So it's a completely acceptable and we all understand why that needs to be done, but you have to also understand that that can cause extra delays and receiving our products as well. Now, manufacturers and suppliers are also sharing with us that the optimistic scenarios for when they expect operations to turn back to quote unquote normal is uh, sometime late or early summer. So basically summer of 2021, that's the optimistic scenario. Now the conservative uh, scenario expect these issues to continue through at least Q4 or quarter four of 2021. In other words, expect problems to continue through the rest of, the, of this year. Now, no one likes to hear that. Um, and that is concerning whether to some of us that have been doing this for a long time or concerning for new candle makers trying to get their feet wet and trying to get started and are having a hard time doing so because of the issues trying to get new supplies. So again, that is not great news and no one really loves hearing that, but that is the world we live in and that's reality. So instead of just kind of burying our head in the sand and kind of hoping for the best and everything turns out, let's go ahead and take some steps. Let's, what are the measures that we can do to help ourselves in this situation? And is there anything we can do to kind of not just combat the problem, but also prepare ourselves for the next year or so. Well, that's the next chunk of this video. I'm gonna go over 10 different tips and strategies and options that you can take as a handcrafter, manufacturer, and retailer yourself to help set you up best for success in 2021. Now, some of these are my own individual tips and others are gathered from the experts in the industries that are telling us the best options uh, in order to handle this issue. So the first tip is to simply step up your tracking of your production, your sales, and your usage of your materials. I've always been really big on metrics and analysis and logistics, even as a small business owner. So even if you haven't been doing this very long and you're very small overall, it's still always important to track your own logistics and measures within your own business. Now, if you're doing this as a hobby, I understand that that's not gonna be near as important for you to do if you're just kind of doing this as a hobbyist and, and or for fun. But as a small business, one of the best ways to grow is to understand the logistics of your business. And I have other videos that I talk about some software that I, that I use heavily. Um, it's called Crafty Base. I'll leave it in the description below. And I'll also leave a link to the video up above. Now, the reason I like that software is it not just, it doesn't just track your materials and your expenses and your orders and your cost of goods and all of that, but it also gives you an idea of what you're selling and your uh, you can create low stock limits and you can set those limits to whatever you want, which means you can start getting alerted when you need to reorder. And you can do this based off of whatever pattern you think is, is the best. And the best thing you can do is to track your sales, try to forecast what you think you're going to need. If you have a better idea of this visually and you can see your business on paper, and how your sales are going, your, your production and your use of your materials, you can better forecast what you'll need in a timely and more efficient manner. And what I really like to do is consolidate these. So I will set my thresholds for low inventory alerts um, to a certain number and then you know every quarter or every month or something like that, whatever, whatever makes sense for your business, you can order and consolidate that. So you, you can see all items that are low and then you can also see all the items that are approaching that low level and maybe you just order all that together. A short summary tip here is just that you should be tracking your production and your materials the best that you can. You don't have to use special software like the one I referred to. You can do it on your Excel spreadsheet. You can do it whatever method you want, but it's really important to track your production and your materials. So tip number two is sort of related to, to tip number one. And in fact, once you do tip number one, this tip will become a little easier. And that is doing seasonal and routine projections. 
So rather than just saying, well, I'm getting low on something I need to order, start using those patterns and metrics to help you plan and forecast out, forecast out a little bit further, particular for seasonal projections like holidays. For example, instead of waiting to late fall to start deciding what you're going to want to offer for Christmas or winter, start doing that a little bit earlier in the year. In other words, don't wait to the last minute to decide what you're going to want to offer. Start thinking about that earlier in the year. Project what you plan to do earlier in the year. This is a normal practice for big businesses. and It will help you grow as well. But projecting those isn't quite enough, which is where tip three comes in. Tip three is once you know your projections, once you know your patterns, and you've done tip one and two, you really need to order supplies much earlier than you normally would. And that is tip number three. If you normally order for winter and fall and you normally order for fall during summer, go ahead and do your ordering all a season earlier. Now, I know that sounds awfully early and you, you, you know a lot can happen um, between two seasons. We live in right now with all these supply chain issues and, and excessive lead times. It's really important to uh, not be waiting to the last minute for your supplies. So go ahead and get your supplies early. You're going to thank yourself later for doing so, so you're not in a rush or in a pinch trying to get supplies uh, at the last minute. Tip number four is to line up multiple suppliers. Many candle makers really rely on just kind of one or two main suppliers, uh, and, and that's a good thing to do. In fact, I have another video where I really push and encourage lining up just one or two manufacturers or suppliers when you're first starting out because it will help you keep your costs down, it will help you consolidate, and it'll make your entire business operations easier when you only have a couple suppliers to have to worry about dealing with. But in times like this, you really need to branch out and reach out to other suppliers. Now you can still rely first and foremost on your on your normal suppliers, but it's good to have an idea of other suppliers that offer the same or similar products that you currently use because in times like this, it can be helpful knowing that your wax is available not just at your normal supplier, but five other places as well. Same with your wicks, same with your jars. Because if your normal supplier runs short or runs low, then you have other outlets to try uh, before they start running low as well. Now, generally speaking, during this pandemic, suppliers, all the suppliers are having issues, but some have suppliers, supplies a little bit longer before they run out or run low. So get your, build yourself a list of suppliers and what supplies they offer that you need to rely on. Number five is to increase your inventory. So we've talked about ordering supplies early and increasing the amount of suppliers that you could potentially work with, but the next step here is to actually increase the amount of supplies you're ordering. Increase your inventory. Now normally inventory control is a very difficult thing already to deal with, and you don't want to have excess inventory because inventory turnover and management of your inventory is very, very important. It helps keep your costs down, your efficiency up. But again, with the issues we're all experiencing right now and the delays of receiving supplies and the shortages, the best thing you can do right now is to increase your material inventory. This will prevent you from getting low or running out um, nearly as quickly, and it will also cut down on the issues that you're having with reordering. So for example, I personally was not affected a ton by these shortages this year. The reason was is because I had ordered so many materials and supplies previously, um, just because I always try to keep a lot, a lot of stock, but I had noticed earlier this year or early, earlier in 2020 where things were starting to get a little bit iffy that I took some proactive measures just in case and I stepped up my inventory and ordered much more than I normally do. And it got me through the entire year of 2020 without having to reorder again for most for most things anyways. Uh, and so I was very fortunate in that regard, but I know that uh, I know a lot of people really did deal with some major issues. Now, a lot of, uh, a lot of you newer candle makers don't have the capacity necessarily to be ordering too much bulk at once. And so this might not apply to you, but if you have the potential to order more inventory than you normally would, that will prevent you from having so many issues when we're having these supply shortages and delays. The next tip, if you are unable to increase the amount of inventory across the board, then focus on your critical products. What products are most important for you to keep on the shelves to ensure the success of your business? Do you have certain products that are most popular? Do you have certain materials that you use in all your products? For example, do you only serve, do you really only have one type of jar? If so, then that is a critical component for your business. And so you really need to up the inventory for that as much as you can um, and as quickly as you can. If you have certain products 
that sell more than others, then you should up the inventory of the fragrance oils that you use for those particular candles, or the wicks that you use for those particular candles, or labels, and so on. So the key idea here is to focus on your critical components and critical products to keep your business afloat. Now tip number seven is to have a contingency plan, or a backup plan, where possible at least. It's not always possible, but where you can, try to come up with some backup products and backup materials. For example, if you do typically only use one jar in your candle lines, try to find a suitable replacement jar. For example, a jar that is roughly the same size or at least roughly the same diameter, something that you feel like you can suitably replace as an alternative if you run low or out of your other products. Now, of course, you would need to be transparent with your customers, maybe on your website, change your descriptions or your titles or whatever your avenue is for selling. Make sure you are transparent and explain to customers that you know you've run low or out of certain materials or supplies due to the pandemic and so you're offering these suitable replacements in the meantime now you may need to adjust price depending on how drastic a backup you need to go to but it's really nice to have something else to fall back on so that you're not completely out of business just because you run out of a core material another great backup item to have is an alternative wick now typically our can as candle makers we try to come up with the optimal and best overall wick for our particular candle. It's also a great idea to test and come up with a suitable backup wick. Sometimes we run into situations where we either run low or out of wicks or suppliers and manufacturers no longer carry those wicks. Right now, a lot of candle makers are experiencing that. So having another wick that works really well as a secondary option can really save you in a pinch. So the seventh tip is to have backups where applicable. Tip number eight is to update your facts on your website, your frequently asked questions, and also your policies for your customers. For example, you might have to update your return policy, your refund policy, explain that due to the pandemic, there's the potential for supply chain issues and you're doing your best to uh, navigate through the pandemic. Uh, basically, just use all these other businesses that are doing this as a reference and kind of see how they're handling the situation. But most of them have some type of banner right on their website that says, you know, we're we are dealing with uh, COVID-19 related issues, just like most other businesses around the world. We're doing our best. There could be um, issues with delays and refunds and processing of orders, things like that. It's all going to depend and vary by business to business and candle maker to candle maker. But basically, just update your policies and your facts on your website. Transparency to your customers really goes a long way. Tip number nine is to extend your own lead times and your ETAs. Now, you can do this as part of tip eight when you're updating your facts and your policies, but this is really important. I would highly recommend on your website updating your lead times and your shipping ETAs. Most of us like to say, you know, we'll ship within three days to one week or we'll ship, ship within one week, something like that. Probably should update those during these times. Most customers are gonna completely understand, but it's much better to give this information up front rather than not change that. Your customers are expecting their order in two or three days. It doesn't happen until a week or two later. And then you have to kind of explain the issues with shipping and that a lot of it's outside of your control. And sometimes you can just end up with an unhappy customer, even though it's not your fault. And even though they know it's not your fault. So the best thing you can do is be upfront, extend your shipping, extend your lead times, extend your shipping ETAs. I think most customers will, ex will appreciate the honesty and the transparency, and it gives you more wiggle room. There's a saying that I really love, and that is under promise over deliver. If you extend your shipping, if you extend your shipping times, your ETAs, your lead times to say one week to two weeks, but you still are able to get a lot of your orders out earlier than that, well then you're just gonna excite your customers and that's just gonna be over delivering what you promised. And that is always great. It's much better to always under promise and over deliver instead of the other way around. And the last tip I have for you today is to simply innovate. Use this as an opportunity to get your creative juices flowing and to be unique and search for ways to make your business even better, more innovative, unique, do something different. If you're having trouble getting certain supplies to make certain products, this is the time to try something new. Start working on a new product, start testing a new product and making something different. Or what can you do to your current products to kind of jazz them up a little bit? Is there anything you can do different in your business and your own operations to increase your own efficiency, to increase your own profit, work on your marketing, anything like that. This is going to be a difficult year or two for a lot of us anyways. So use the opportunity that's given to you to do what you can. Prove your business in different ways. Not everything is just about making the candles themselves. There are a lot of ways to improve your business 
and this is a really good time to try to work on those things. I wish you all the best uh, in 2021. I know 2020 was a really rough year, and um, I'm hoping, you know, just like everyone else at 2021, um, ends up being better. It's been a little bit of a rocky start so far, but, uh, you know, fingers crossed that uh, things improve from here. I'm wishing all of you the best of luck and the best of success in 2021 and all years going forward. I really hope that this video give you a little bit of encouragement, also some hope uh, and ways to deal and navigate this, uh, this pandemic. If you have any other questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. As always, I appreciate all of you for being here. Thank you to my current subscribers. If you are new, please consider subscribing as I try to post content regularly on here. So again, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Thanks.